Oof. Make sure that don't fall. Peace, peace, peace. Greetings, 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 greetings. Okay, make sure this don't fall. Um, I was definitely contemplating. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it procrastinating on creating this this video today, but um, I'm gonna do it anyway because it's my solar return, or people like they call it birthday. Um, it's funny because I heard someone say, "Oh, you you only you only have one birthday. I guess it's when you birth." <laughs> But to each their own for everybody. Um, for me, uh, it's a beautiful moment. It's really like a milestone right now. Um, where I'm currently at, like upon my journey and in the process of just like trying to soak everything in. Okay, I'm not gonna get distracted by these messages coming in, but I just wanna first give an honor to source that I'm able to be here to see like 35, bro, 35. I do not feel 35, do not look 35, but approximately 6, 13, November 14, 1989, a star was, a star entered this galaxy, this realm, <laughs> this world, <laughs> you know it. No, nah, but um, it's not even just about seriousness because I'm a really reflect and get into a lot right now um in regards to just like where i'm at and where i'm going the scorpio season whatever this this is season in my life i'm sure for a lot of us has been very intense i just knew that was gonna happen it's been very intense i'm trying to sit this up with my bag because i didn't bring nothing but um yeah this has been very intense very transformational i'm sure we all are experiencing something whether in your world or something that's going on around the world globally bro y'all all right <laughs> no nah, but um the the beauty of the milestone of being 35 man some people might like you know put their perspective oh that's old that's da 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 it's very much young very much young and I've been reflecting on a lot because of there are people that I wish that could be here. There are people that, um, did I say that already? Yeah, let's give honor to the source and the ancestors. No, 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 no. So yeah, um, to the divine mother and father also, and to, to y'all, of course, that's tuning in. Um, this is going to be, let me get back to what I was saying, like very relatable message when it comes to the fact of like, um, today I've just been in very reflective mode, um, not really, really relaxing. I know some people, not that it matters, like, will be planning other stuff, planning to drink, planning to do other stuff, or whatever it is to each their own. But this one is very significant because 35 is like, because I wasn't always here when it comes to astrology, but learning the significance of like, um, every like seven years is very significant in someone's life. So, what is this? 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So yeah, 35 is like almost like another Saturn, what we call return. But it's like a, almost like a, in a way of the dis like lessons karmically or just so many things that when I really reflect on the maturity or how I had to learn so much through my emotional purging, um, learning myself, what else? Um, purging myself spiritually, purging myself from the beliefs of the world. For one, let's start off with being like 35 and 35 in a country that, again, would have meant as darker skin. Like I'm gonna start on that level. And just the, uh, psychological warfare and that that you have to maintain that you have to uphold and have confidence in and not allow that to be um burdensome or almost like something that is like leeching or attaching yourself to your mental space and being able to rise above beyond seeing just the skin or you know how society deems just a man that is darker so it's almost like when the odds are stacked up against you 
And I was telling myself, like, um, you know, just viewing, even just, let me go in more into detail about that. Just not just that, but just the darker aspect of being a man in a place where it just seems like the world is against you or it seems like um, we are trying to beat the odds or trying to, um, when everything seems like it's stacked up against you, with trying to just be confident in who you are, trying to be confident in your artistry and your um, walking in integrity, no matter the culture and creed, um, not getting caught up in, you know, the illusion of what success is, and that's what I'm going to get into eventually. But again, just for a lot of us that can relate, you know, that grew up in the trenches or grew up in a lot of places where it seems a lot of self-hatred or it seems a lot of people who a crab in a bucket mentality. It's almost like when you're trying to make it out, when you're trying to, and it's not so much a escape, but it's almost like, well, it is an escapism in a way, um, but it's more so like making it out of, it's, it's going into yourself to the depths, but making it out of the, the survival mentality, the, the, the poverty mentality, and to be where I am now, because that is in all types of cultures, but most importantly from my demographics, seeing what I grew up in, seeing um, the people that I had to avoid just to be where I am now, because again, that's what I'm gonna lead into, like what success really is for me and how riches in a way, spiritually, it's just as vital as when you see um, the world, the old world or the old narrative to push this 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 um, ideal or ideology of or, you know, idealism of, you know, the capitalism and all these other things around what success is for this person, that person. And even for me, and I've spoken about that before, like even when it comes to just, you know, the stereotypes of, oh, you you're darker or you're 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 just athletic or you're just good for this or you're just good for that in the mental space that you have to have or the capacity to literally rid yourself cleanse yourself um remove these things that um you realizing when you come to the self-realization that it no longer serves you and it doesn't serve the world that you're creating in your inner world and in in your mind's eye and so forth so it's been, let's just say, <laughs> God dang, boy, 35. Going back to where I, there was, like, I reflect deeply on how, <clears throat> how divinely orchestrated it is because when I look at where I'm at and I was, I was talking to, uh, you know, a younger guy, you know, younger gentleman about, you know, how, how important it is for men to have emotional awareness and just because of their demographics and how certain decisions could be life changing or life altering and affect your life for the long haul. And just for my experience from that is has a lot to do with um, having to learn this process, having to unlearn the importance of how you can be wounded um, in so many ways in your childhood and how that eventually plays out into your adulthood and into your, how you mature, how you progress, how you, um, you know, visualize life, you know, your awareness on life. And so me being at this place now is, it's like, it's not so much of the, the age and in reality it is, but at the same moment, I always remind people, you got some people that are growing old, you got some people that are growing wiser. And I'm grateful to be one of the ones that grow wiser. And that's through my lessons, that's through accountability, that's through accepting like, this is what I had to go through to get where I am. And I had to let go a lot of the shame and guilt around what I've experienced, who I was around, um, the mindset, um, the belief systems, you know, literally trying to remove this mindset of like, oh, well, being that I'm darker, this is what all I have. This is all there is. And in reality, it's not. And so and that's the beauty of that is due to my risk taking or or being optimistic or being, um, you know, stepping outside of my comfort zone, facing things head on, facing my fears, 
being open to challenges, whether with money or without money, um, having integrity, um, having faith in trials and tribulations of, you know, things again through my upbringing, through my childhood when I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to allow this to hinder me. I don't have to be a product of my environment. I can actually be almost like the, the, the source or use this as a resource to where I'm going. And so 35 is so pivotal for me because of, again, there are things I'm not proud of, but at the same moment, had I not experienced it, I would not be speaking to y'all. I would not be sharing my message. So the beauty of it all is like, even how, like I felt like certain people should be here. But then when I reflect and look at the lives that they were choosing, and it's not always that case because when the most high calls your number, you know, we all have free will. So it happens, things happen the way it has to. But there are just certain people I felt that should have been here. And it made me at times question the creator. It made me question the most high, whatever, you know, whatever you believe in. It just made me question like, well, why did I come here? Why did I have to experience this? And I now I'm at so much of a confident and comfortable or secure place and still gradually learning that because Again, the, the, the biggest lesson that I've had to learn even being now at 35 is how much of what I did not receive is now preparing me for to be open to receive. And those things could be from, again, the emotional support, um, the, you know, things leading up to the physical support, but in a more genuine way. So I had to really get myself um, realize what my own internal blockages was, what what was my own internal battle, what what were things that I was not taking account for. And in that, the beauty of all that is like you seeing yourself blossom and you continuing to grow. And so, you know, I, I've been in a huge reflective mode of like, man, such and such should have been here or this person should have been here. And it's nothing against people who are doing what they're doing because we all individually, whether on a soul level, whether on a on an individual level, level, whatever it is, we all are going through said lessons, consequences, uh, reaping what we sow. Whatever we we all are going through that individually, and it eventually will have a ripple effect on all. And you know, there are even times where I reflect on like, yo, bro, why such and such couldn't come with me, or why this person? But in reality, again, as you know, I'm using the term, like as your consciousness expands or as you start to remove things or face fears and face things from your subconscious and, you know, things that are dealing with, you know, things ancestrally, things matriarchally, patriarchally, you know, things relation, uh, what's the word, you know, relationships, you know, all on all different types of levels to where you realize I'm like, you're redefining yourself. You're rebranding yourself. You're being rebirthed through the fact of like, yo, I never knew me, but now I know me more to the depths. I'm constantly evolving. So the people that assume and thought that they knew me, they knew nothing about me. They knew that version of me at that time. And so the beauty of now, the expansion is like, I still accept those versions of me, but I don't have to allow that to consume or, you know, um, one of my greatest lessons is not allowing what I went through in the past to define who I am. Rather, through that, I redefine myself. It's almost like I'm molding myself. Like my life is like showing me that I'm molding, like literally like a, a clay or like, you know, pottery. You like, sometimes you think you got this right and sometimes it, it slips off the thing and you gotta put it right back. And I feel like that is a constant thing on life. It's like an evolution. And so you always, you know, right now I'm at 35. I feel like right now I'm going, I'm just now going back to the drawing board because there's so much that has happened in my life. There's so much that, you know, I've had to cut people off. I've had, it's almost like, like I don't eat meat anymore, but it's almost like you're preparing something and you're cutting away at the, the extra fat that you don't want. And it's almost like you're removing certain things, like a garden, like I tell you, I use a garden, like you're removing certain weeds and things that no longer serves you just for you to blossom because if certain weeds are still in your life and you can just use that as people. And, and that's just things that want to hinder your growth. 
you're still growing, but at the same time, those weeds can become overbearing to where it actually suffocates the flower or the fruit or whatever. So all those things, again, where I'm at now, it's almost like this season of just where we at, like autumn where things are falling away and things are dying away and things we're letting go of stuff. It's almost like preparation for another said version or another perspective, another um, awareness on life. And, yo, as much as I, I feel like I have needed to have regrets, I don't because no one knows the depths of how I got here. So, um, you know, if you'd have asked me, <laughs> if you would have asked me when I was, what, 10 or 11 or something, like, oh, well, well, I will say this, since I was younger, I did a admire or wanted to have to what they call be married or have a big family because a lot of things I did not receive or the harmonious aspect of that in my childhood, it's like now you're experiencing it. Now you're like, whoa, wow. But what most people don't realize is like a lot of things we did not receive, depending on your upbringing, that's what has me in a lot of places where I reflect on because a lot of, let's say, deaths or a lot of things could have been prevented had a lot of us, you know, young men and, you know, people had that emotional support. Uh, or that that um, encouraging person, that empowerment in our upbringings. And, you know, due to things being the way it is, we can't undo it. But being where I am now, I feel like the beauty of the responsibility of learning self-love and self-care. And I'm not saying I'm perfect in it all, but it's like the unlearning and then the relearning and then the realizing like your life was never going to ever be the same once you like start accepting and shedding these layers and these versions of yourself you're like bro who was i what am i doing and now things are just so clear and all these self-realizations and like you're questioning and thinking like oh this is what i was supposed to do but once you want your life is constantly evolving so in this season you're supposed to do this and sometimes we sit things to the side and then it can be months and years later where you it returns. And so, again, evolution is, is in so many different ways to where I've told myself, I'm like, you know what? Well, this season is asking me to do this, to rest, to chill, to sit back and observe instead of always being in a constant hustle and bustle. And so, again, that's just my perspective. But when I also, again, reflect back on a lot of the young men, even cousins or just people that I knew, a lot of us was not supposed to make it to where we are, you know? And I mean, like, I'm gonna speak from a, like a generational curse aspect, or, and I'm, you know, speaking from a generational curse breaker and also speaking from an ancestral thing where, you know, there's been a spiritual warfare. That's been a, that's been a, a target on a lot of our, our backs since we were young, especially when you're coming into this world and the world is already trying to tell you who you are without even, without any compassion or grace, especially when the world is trying to tell you in this country who you are before you are even set out to even accomplish something. And that goes, and that leans right into like the fact that again, me personally knowing people who took the road of like robbery and then it didn't turn out too well or, you know, you've seen, you know, jail or just certain things, which I've been down that road. I've been down that road where, again, I knew nothing, the importance of how I knew now, the deeper awareness around emotional awareness, around the importance of emotional intelligence. When I reflect on my past, there were decisions when you look up my, whether you want to call it record, when you look up my name, it's not a, nothing to be ashamed for. It's the fact of like, yo, I'm able to look at the wounded parts of that man to be like, man, that was just a little boy who did not know the importance of how to regulate his emotions. And so when you see a lot of people, whether it's in the prison system, whether you see people who are automatically found guilty or just something, I see a deeper awareness around the fact of like, there is nothing set in place or had been in place for people to see exactly why that behavior was displayed or get to know that individual or know the depths of why this person did what they did. 
And that's just me. Like that's I'm I'm very investigative. I guess this must be my Scorpio energy in the Western aspect of like astrology. But that's just me like wanting to get to know the depths of things, like the the mystery behind like, well, why did he do this? And why does she do this? And again, seeing the unevolved or the wounded version to the to the to the heal and or healing through. And that's what you're seeing right here, right now. When I look at the things that I went through and I reflected on. I have no doubt that I have been divinely guided and protected to even share this message because there are moments where I was telling someone, I was like, bro, where I was reflecting today, I was like, man, I could have, I could have went to that party. I could have talked to that girl. I could have, even through my times when I was being Sullivan, I could have laid down with that person and they could have been telling me all the right things and not knowing that they had some type of disease, you know, or some type of something. I could have uh, allowed my emotions to get the best of me and, 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 and chose to go fight this person or, you know, get myself involved with something. And in reality, what that looks like, because that's on a physical aspect, but on a, on a karmic aspect, spiritually, that's literally creating more karma that whatever you put out returns. And that's what, you know, the awareness of all this is about. It's like, I'm, you know, when I look at what I went through and what I've experienced, that's, that's no shame or guilt in feeling ashamed for what I know personally that I've sown. Meaning what I know I put out there, like spiritually, there's no shame in what I know I put out there. And see, that's the beauty of the peace. It's like, you know, I reflect so deeply to where when I look at the trajectory or reflect on the last three years, I'm like, oh my gosh, look what I made it through. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I did not make this decision or react that way. And that's why I'm so grateful and so honored to share y'all with this. Because again, for those who haven't followed my journey, the last year or so, like I said, I, I, I can honestly say I haven't been the best partner. I haven't been the best friend. I haven't been the best whatever it is. Because in that process, I was like, yo, I can acknowledge my role in what I perceived or my belief system on a friend, on a partner, on a spouse, on a father, you know, all these things, all the while unlearning the parts of me that I kept hidden away from myself, the parts of me that were wounded, the parts of me that, again, learning and see the effects of how not being able to regulate my emotions, how that affects others, how that, you know, my tonality, my approach, you know, having more compassion for myself. I mean, there is so many layers and versions where I realize we are too hard on ourselves. Seriously, we, 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 we are too hard on ourselves when we make certain decisions. And in reality, the, the, the creator of sources, like we're returning to our essence, to the innocence of how and come to the self realization of how much how much we have been preyed on through society, through governmental structures, through the powers that used to be, um, through so many things that preyed on our childhood woundings to keep us from realizing that we are a divine spark. We are something greater on a micro and, uh, what is it? Micro and macro aspect of life, like in a, in, in a greater scheme of things. Like, so who is this? Oh, appreciate that. So, um, yeah, man, it's 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 um, me self reflecting on like I guess like just the people I I felt that should have been here. It it was really all a lesson in why they couldn't be here, why they shouldn't have been here, and so forth. Because it just brings more awareness now to my approach. And then now, like a lot of us are going through said things where we we almost felt like it should have destroyed us. I'm like, look, I would never compare my journey to no one else because for one, I would never compare my journey to you, anybody else, simply because, yo, I don't I, I don't I don't know if I have the mental capacity, the physical strength, the emotional uh, strength or whatever it is to to fight off the things spiritually you went through, the spiritual warfare you endured, the vices and so forth. 
And that's the beauty of the individual path. Like I, that I know for a fact there is none, no other person. And this is what makes us all unique and so divine in our birthright. There is nobody that could tell my story like I can tell it. That could have went through and walked the steps and did the things that I've done. And this is not no sympathy story. This is not anything. This is just like the beauty of how life really unfolds so beautifully from a karma to a dharma path. And I feel like that's that's literally a balance. Even when we don't realize unconsciously what we're doing, and then we, 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 we're faced with this karma that we're clearing energetically, like, do y'all realize the beautiful moment that we're in right now that is so miraculous? And, you know, at times I'd be wanting to be like, oh my gosh, what the fuck am I going through? Why did I sign up for this? Did I come here alone? Why did I, you know, is this so much to wear? There is so much happening, like, cosmically, energetically, wherever you are on your path to where, again, whether you believe in said things, if that's not your belief system, you still, in, in your own birthright, is a, are a miracle. Some of you have gotten through things that nobody else could have endured. When I look at my path, and when I see that I'm still creating, and I did not cut corners, and I start to look at the fact of, like, wow, had I went with this person, that could have been me um, at that said funeral. Or if I did not walk in integrity and then through that integrity, I had to live in a hotel or I had to experience this. Well, guess what? I can I can have that peace to realize, like, you know what? I, I didn't have to cut corners. I didn't have to prove myself. I didn't have to lie to myself about, you know, um, well, I'm going to do this just to people, please. And in reality, it's like, I have no regrets. I don't have to feel shame about what it is, no matter what has brought been brought up from the past or what people feel like I should feel or what I should feel guilty of or shame. And in reality, the beauty of moving forward and growing out of that is like, reflect on your life in the last three years. And even if you don't have the same amount of money even if you don't have the same people around you, whatever it is, can you ask yourself, like, are you in a better place emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically? Because even though it don't, you know, when I reflect two years ago, three years ago, at that time I was in a hotel. That At that time I was more in a survival mindset. At that moment I was trying to get... Um, I was creating things from just to survive, like creating from my masterpiece of art, depending on where I was. But I had to because that was moments where I had to get out. It led me to where I am now. And now being that where I'm at now, I'm creating from a place of, you know, it's, it's bigger than just receiving something from it. I'm creating also from a place of seeing how far I've come. My recent masterpiece being like um, that, um, uh, um, both masculine and feminine principles, like the the the, the woman, the full figure woman, or the plus size woman with the with the um, with the rose as her head, like you know, all those things are symbolic. You know, representing the feminine energy, the the nude, the nakedness, um, and then the purple, like the crown chakra, and you know, the the beauty in just it just you know, loving itself inwardly. And then I had the other one where um, the guy is melting away with the phoenix. If you don't know, you can go actually look at my post or in my community center. And it's like a phoenix burning from the inside. It's almost like the soul is, is, is ripping itself. It's burning from the inside out, like this burning feeling, like this passion and everything and so forth. And the man is melting away but he's looking up and the reason he's looking up is because through it all, I've kept my head up, my chin up and I kept my head to the stars. I kept my head to the sky or just kept my head up or, you know, it's almost like keeping my, the awareness around like, um, stay in a place of, you know, self-awareness. But at the same time, that, that, that figure of that man that's melting is representing the ego self. 
because it's like the phoenix, the soul aspect is like through everything transformative, things that have unfolded. You have, un you know, evolved through so much to now you're at this place where no matter what happens, you always know that you can be reborn through this situation, through this circumstance, through these consequences, through this karma, through this lesson, through this relationship, through this partnership, this business, even just life. So with that, it's like accepting that when that that phoenix is rising within, it's to remind myself and you, it's like, listen, look at where you are. There are things on your path specifically that were supposed to take you out. Whatever you went through spiritually, whatever you went through mentally, emotionally, when I reflect, there are people that do not make it to 35. There are people I wish that were here there are people recently that are that are an elder to me and not even in their forties that have made certain decisions. And every day it's a daily thing because, you know, being that again for myself to see my growth, again, I have not been perfect. I have hurt people simply because I realized I didn't feel safe within myself. I didn't feel secure. So the awareness around it now is like to get to this place, to learn that, oh, you are safe. You are secure. You know, that little boy, that inner child, to know that, okay, this is what's happened in your childhood, but you no longer have to carry that in your in your body. And, you know, I, I've talked about this before, how, like, there's a book, and just naturally what we, what we do is, like, we inherited things from our mother and father, but we also, our body keeps the score. Our body keeps... The, the, the energy or, you know, when we're younger, the body holds memory like water. Our body are made up of water. So even what we hear, what we listen, what we go through, our body keeps the score or our body keeps that memory, that repressed emotion, that how we felt in that moment. And so when I reflect on that, when I see what I went through, how I put other people through certain things, even when I was not consciously aware, even when I wasn't aware that, oh my gosh, like, you're learning this behavior, you're listening to this, you're doing this and not realizing the effects that it will have on people in the long run. And this is what you're seeing in the world right now. This is what you're seeing play out right now with a lot of people. And I told myself, I'm like, yo, you're the generational curse breaker. You're the one that here to change that. I didn't say the most I say you're going to be perfect in everything that you do, because what sense would it make if you just came down here or you came here perfect, like with everything spot clean? or you just don't make mistakes or don't, you know, have shortcomings. That's This is all a part of the human experience. This is all a part of the lesson we all get to learn. It's just that in our childhood, we were more, like, you know, more vulnerable, more helpless. We couldn't really fend ourselves. We couldn't really protect ourselves physically, emotionally, mentally. Even though we, a lot of us were protected, you know, something greater for us to even be where we are now. But those things happen purposefully. Uh, and it's unfortunate for a lot of us, it, it affected us to where some people don't even recover from this. When I look at my journey, some people will never recover from what I went through. And it's, 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 it's deep because I'm telling myself, I'm like, bro, what? How? And when I ask how, and I'm like, man, you know what? Let me let me give gratitude. I can finally start to wake up in joy. For a lot of us, let me tell you how beautiful this is for me. If you grew up in childhood, or if you grew up in homes where there was so much conflict, where you felt like, you know, every time you turn around, you got someone yelling at you, the tone. Someone sent me a video on this, and I appreciate them for that. They sent me a video saying, like, the tone is important in a relationship. And, bruh, this is something I am unlearning. For those of you that don't know me and for those that have been around me, my tone, my voice travels. It has a base to it. So there are times where I say something to my princess, I say something to people, and they're intimidated. And it's, like, not purposefully, um, but it's just gradually I've had to process and unlearn the fact of, like, okay, Maybe I need to say it this way. Maybe I need to approach it this way. And that's helping me. That's, you know, I, I, and that, that goes along with self-talk. Like, how do I talk to myself? How do I feel about myself? These are things we never learned. These are things we never received. So 
I'm grateful even in the years that I am now to I can be aware like, you know what? Every day you can get better. It don't have to be perfect, but every day you can, it can get better. And being better doesn't have to look like what everybody else perceives it. Being better is just simply getting up and you're choosing to rest or you're choosing to do a little self-care routine. You're choosing to balance out your mental and emotional health rather than going out there and just think you got to throw yourself to the wolves. So for me, again, it's the awareness around how I told myself, I'm like, man, you're a generational curse breaker. You're here to do it differently. And with that, there are going to be others that need you. There are moments where I felt like I was not needed. I know a lot of you can relate. There are, there are moments where I felt like, man, am I always going to go through this? Am I always going to experience this? People, places. And then I had to check myself. I had to take accountability. I had to recognize the season I'm in. I had to recognize even my shortcomings, even the moments where I pushed people away and I didn't realize it. Because I didn't, I, I was pushing them away at the same time pushing my inner child back right into the corner, pushing those emotions down, pushing those repressed memories. You know, a lot of us have learned so much due to what our demographics, through our upbringings and so forth. We have learned to push things down in a way, brush it up under the rug. And this conflict avoidance behavior that we have um, created in this society and these environments has a lot to do with avoiding the conflict within ourselves. And I realized within myself what I was breaking generationally representing the patriarchal and also being in tune with the feminine aspect of who I am. That emotional part of me is that feminine aspect. So being that I had to become more aware, I'm like, yo, I, 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 I pushed so much emotions down to where I started to recognize why I was so short tempered, why I was so angry. And I used to sit back and like, why am I so angry? What am I angry about? And then when I asked myself that, that's when the emotions, the memories and all these things from my childhood and teens and so forth start to come up. These things start to resurface. Then when you have kids, even more, that highlights even more because you see so much of a purity in what you went through. But it also brings up things that are so uncomfortable. And so as I gradually start to get into, like, you know, learning more and, and reflecting, like, me being 35, I'm like, wow, this is a milestone because most people, some people I know didn't see it past 30, man. Didn't even, I think one of what was my cousin, he didn't even see it too late. Yeah, he didn't even make it to 30. So, it's, it's like, you know, it's different. Even how I look at success, I see success now as being peace. Success, my perspective on success is that I, I like going back to like how I grew up in a home that was the way it was to where, again, seeing how the tone now, setting the tone when you get up, you know, seeing how like, you know, people, I, they call it PTSD, but it's almost like the triggers and all that stuff when you're getting up. When you're getting up and you realize like, wow, the success in that, the success in my perspective is like getting up in a home where there is peace and quiet. I mean, I mean, you may hear a baby cry. I'm talking about from my perspective or, you know, but it's just getting up in a home where you could pretty much like success or just liberation or just the fact of like sovereignty, however you want to look at it, it's just to be able to get up and breathe and count your blessings. You know, I said before today, I was like, man, I have this in my account. And I don't care if it was five, ten, two dollars, I don't care what it was. I have this, I have my peace, I have my sanity, um, I have my health, I have, you know, the people around me that love me and they care about me. I have a shelter, I have food. You know, just the simplest things that are success to me in a spiritual sense. You know, I'm, I'm, throughout the years, I reflect I'm more spiritually, uh, my hygiene, like healthy, um, mentally more healthy, emotionally more healthy. Because again, there are places where I realize I still got work to do. I'm not finna come on this motherfucker and act like I'm perfect. Absolutely not. 
there again, and my biggest challenge has been my emotions. When I reflect on my past, when I reflect on everything that I went to up to now, that has a lot to do with even my tone. Going back to the video, like this guy was saying, because I feel I be sometimes, you know, I be getting a little side swipe, but you know, going back to the video that the person sent me was telling me how, showing me how, like the man was saying, how he grew up and his mom used to be like, hey, you know, blah, 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 this, all that. You know, then when he got married, he, his wife was the opposite of that, I believe he said. And his tone was different because he's so used to responding that way or, you know, and it can be looked at totally different to where you don't even realize unconsciously or what has been programmed subconsciously for you to believe in this belief system that you had taken on and thinking like, this is how life's supposed to be. This is what we normalize. And that's the fucking dysfunction and all of this, bro. And it's not the same for everybody. But when I'm talking about like the fact of like what we have normalized and what we have thinking that is acceptable. And in reality, the world humanity is at war with themselves and, you see it play out because so many people don't even really know what peace is. And they actually think that a lot of things that are here that is happening is normal. And it's far from that. And so through all the upheaval and everything, when I watched that video, I was like, wow. You know, it, it really, my greatest lesson again is my approach, my, you know, the emotions to allowing them to serve you, um, to bring out what needs to be felt and not allowing it to control you. And, and, that, and the reason I say that has been huge for me is because I've seen the consequences of when I did not allow my, when I, when I did not um, honor my emotions or honor um, or let or even suppress them. And, you know, again, through just through human interaction, through, just through who we are, you got arguments. You got things that we say sometimes that we cannot take back and don't realize how that affects people. We do things where um, it, it's not OK. And then we don't realize how much we push people away because it's our own shit. <laughs> That's been the biggest lesson. It's the accountability, the acceptance like, bro. It doesn't have to be this way. You don't got to be this way just because that's what you saw growing up. Your tone or your approach or everything don't have to be this way just because that's what you saw or seen. And that's the biggest thing about being a generational curse breaker for all of you out there. Everybody's not ready for that. Everybody said they won't change, but change will make your ass face who you are. Change will make you face the very thing that you fear the most, which is change, which is the unknown. Because you don't know where that can lead you. You don't know, and I don't mean just consequences. It's like, it's beauty in the unknown because I'm realizing like, wow, like where is this, these conversations, these exchanges, this YouTube, this artistry, um, these writings or just so many other things. Where is this going to lead me? And it's almost like I had to rewire my mind because of the poverty and the survival mindset is that there are times where I couldn't, the doubt would cloud my judgment and, and, and my intuition. And I'd be like, man, you know what? Can something really great come from this? And I feel like a lot of stuff is not just right in front of us, but we, we, we skim past so much to realize like the present moment. And what I mean by that is like, look at where it got me. Had I not walked in integrity, had I not been honest with myself, had I not um, took that route, least travel, took that road, least travel, did those things that most people in my family wouldn't do. And then here I am. I'm, man, I ain't finna get emotional, but bro, it's almost like the tears of joy because I, again, I reflect on how many people um, that I wish could have been here. And it's nothing against none of that. It's just the beauty in staying the course, man. Like I said, it's so much more than money. If you have a gift and you're using it for the betterment, you, you know you're coming from a place of the oneness of all involved and how it affect everybody because we didn't have a world that was, you know, constructed by that or had foundations upon that. It was a lot more ego and a lot more selfish. 
But if you could really, you know, do to probably go through your healing or woundedness, and, and that's the thing I had to go through, the biggest lesson is to see how it affects so many other people to get to this place where it has an effect, like a ripple effect, and you're like, oh my gosh. Like, you got to clap it up for yourself. I had to sit here and clap it up for myself to, like, go through what I went through and create books to do something. You know, when the last time you did something for the first time to do something I've never, I wouldn't say I've never dreamed to do. I knew I was going to do it because I wrote this shit down in my notes, like, years ago. And that's why I feel like it's so vital. It's like, don't lose sight of the fact of what the Most High has given you. I mean, even if it's something so simple, what they say, as long as you have faith of a mustard seed, it don't even matter if it's a mustard seed. It's a, you are the seed itself. You are the seed that grows. As long as you have faith in yourself and your connection to the divine, to source, <clears throat> there are going to be things that are going to be removed. It's natural. All flowers don't blossom the same. All trees don't, don't blossom the same. All things don't grow in the same season. And that's one thing I had to learn to when I, I realized I felt like I was behind. And the most high, like, are you kidding me? You never been behind. There were times a lot of us grew up in school or went through that whole little dysfunctional process where they want you to learn this way and they call you ADHD because you're more so like learning multidimensionally or you, you just taking information differently and you don't learn everybody. So they or learn the same way so they want to put you in a box like fuck no when i look at the fact of yo when i grew up in certain environments bro no one can never tell me that i have never been special unique no one even with times where i did not feel it for you that wants to give up you are needed not wanted you are needed in this moment you are needed. And I don't mean just you are needed by others. You need you too. That's the most important things I had to learn between balancing my own independence and then learning to balance that with associate myself or connecting with other people. I used to question like, why couldn't this person support me? Why couldn't this person do this? And I was just telling someone, I'm like, it's amazing how for a lot of us that do follow astrology and know a lot of these transits are happening in the season that we're in, we know that this is the coming of a new age and we're already in it in a new world. And what I mean by that new world individually and collectively, because a lot of us have went through so many things to where we assume that our childhood, sweetheart, friends, whatever it is, people were supposed to come with us on the way up or on the way out or on the way to where we were going. Doesn't mean you don't return or people won't see you, but it's the awareness around like you are here to do things differently. You are here to set as as the foundation crumbles. As, it's like your visual. I always give you all this visual. As you're walking forward, the foundation is crumbling behind you. Imagine that. But as you're walking, moving forward, I, got, I feel like I got to do a masterpiece on this. It's like as you're moving forward, stones are being placed. It's like the ancestors are lighting your path. Stones are being placed. That's someone visually holding a light on your path, even when you stumble and darkness is all around, there's still someone like there holding a light to your path. That's how I visualize the ancestors, you know, in the spiritual sense. Even when there's moments where it seems like you have a near-death experience and there's something, you know, amazing or miraculous happens. Even when you're, you know, there's times that I can just be authentic where I wanted to escape through alcohol or I will go back into this habit of doing something and I'd be like, fuck, bro. Like, but then there's always something there, like, no, you're here. What are you doing? You know, and that's the beauty of seeing how far you've come. There's something I'm like, yo, you know, like, no. Oh. You know, there's times where I, I feel like I gotta go drink myself to oblivion. Um, you know, and, that, and that's the thing about life. You, you feel you you have to go, you you go through these experiences just to be reminded of life that's shoot that's <laughs>